Hey everyone, welcome back to my page. I'm sorry it's been a while, but there's been a lot going on with this, this whole pandemic and working, working on something really great for you guys. So I kind of been off the grid for a little bit, but just for a little bit and I'm back. And um, what I'm going to talk about today is um, COVID testing, um, because that's been the real big thing right now where I work at. Um, as you guys all know, I'm a revenue integrity coding analyst. And while coding isn't everything that I do, um, I also make sure that the organization is getting paid accurately for the services that we are providing. And so, um, of course, I've got called on from my, my manager and the VP of the hospital asking me questions like, how are we supposed to be sync within our codes and what codes should we be using to make sure that we are being reimbursed accurately for the services that we are providing? So today I want to talk about the four most common questions that I've received within my organization about how, how should this be coded. Um, so one, known exposure to COVID. So you could possibly have a patient come into your, your emergency department. Let's say you work at the emergency department, doctor's office, clinic, somewhere where they're doing the testing and the patient comes in and says that they know for a fact they've been around someone who has tested positive for COVID-19 and they are coming in because they were instructed to do so by their provider and they, they wanna come in and they want to get tested for COVID, right? And so let's say that they come in, they get tested for COVID-19 and the test results come out as negative. Well, you will give that patient a diagnosis of Z20.828. Contact with and suspected exposure to other viral communicable diseases, okay? So that is the diagnosis you would give to someone who has had known exposure to COVID-19. They come in and they get tested, but the test results come back as negative, okay? Now, then you can have somebody that comes in and says that I've possibly been exposed to someone who tested um, positive of COVID-19, or I don't really know for sure. Somebody, you know, that I worked with was coughing and stuff. I'm not sure if they were sick. I mean, possibly, I could have possibly been exposed to COVID-19. They come in, they get tested, and the test results come back as negative. Now, that person, you would give them a diagnosis of the Z03.818, which is the encounter for observation for suspected exposure to other biological agents ruled out, okay? So the difference in between the first one is the first one, first person said, I know for a fact, I was around someone who tested positive for COVID-19. I know for a fact, it's not suspected. They know for a fact they tested positive. This one here with the Z03.818, they don't know. They just said, oh, it's a possibility. There's a possibility I was around someone who might have had COVID. That's the diagnosis code that you would give them. Then you have the patient that comes in and says, I don't know, I'm just totally freaking out. You know, I'm starting to have fevers and I'm sweating and stuff like that at night and I'm coughing and I could just swear that I can't breathe. I don't know, I don't know if I've been around someone who tested part, I don't know, I don't know. I just wanna come in and get tested. I just I just wanna see if, if I have it. That person would get the diagnosis of the Z11.59. And that's encounter for screening for other viral diseases, okay? So you have the person who knows for a fact they've been around someone who tested positive. You have the person who possibly could have been around someone who has COVID-19. And then you have the person that's just coming in just because they want to get screened. There is no reason why. They just, they think that they may could possibly have it and they just want to get the screening. So those are the three common reasons as far as ED encounters um, when the patient comes in and testing in the three different codes that you would assign to these patients. Now, of course, if the patient comes in and they test and they test positive, then you will give them the diagnosis for COVID-19. You would not use any of these codes here because the patient has tested positive and you can um, actually diagnose them um, with the documentation in the record with the COVID-19 code. Now, um, another um, a question that has been asked is if a patient has COVID-19 and they develop sepsis, which code is sequenced first? That is determined based on whether or not sepsis was present on admission. So if a patient comes in that's COVID-19 positive 
and sepsis was not present on admission, then the COVID-19 would be the primary diagnosis code. If a patient comes in and sepsis is already on set, it's already present on admission, and the patient is also COVID-19 positive, the sepsis code would be primary, and the COVID-19 code would be the secondary diagnosis code, followed by any other manifestations after that. Okay, so hopefully um, this has helped someone out if you already work in a medical practice or in the ED department, and these have been some of the, the questions that had, has come up of how to sync with the codes or which code to use based off of which scenario. Hopefully this will help you out. As registered health information technicians, this is a part of our duty to make sure that we're up to date with coding changes and that we're relaying this information off to our departments, to the managers, to the physicians, to the coders, to the revenue integrity team, that we make sure that everyone is up to date with what's supposed to be coded, how is it supposed to be documented so that we can make sure that our facilities are being reimbursed appropriately for the services that we are providing, okay? So um, like I said earlier in the video, I'm working on something really great for you guys. Um, it's, it's, in the, it's in the works. Everyone just stay safe out there and practice social distancing and whatever you have to do to stay COVID-19 free. Um, if you haven't already subscribed to my channel on YouTube, make sure that you subscribe to my channel so that you don't miss a beat.